Okay, so uh, in this unit, we talk about tort law. All right, so let's see. No, it's not a French dessert. Uh, what is that? But when we use it in this course, we're, we're talking about something else. So when we say tort, we're talking about a civil wrong uh, that results in harm from one person to another or from a business to a person or a person to a business. All right. So why do we have tort law? Well, the general idea is that tort law exists to compensate uh, those for the losses. Uh, well, really, it exists to keep people from taking the, the law into their own hands. Right. Um, you're involved in an automobile accident. You can sue that person because if tort law didn't exist, what would your remedy be? Well, I mean, I guess you could take the law into your own hands and try and go balance the scales. But that might not be best for civil and a civilized society. So that's why tort law exists. All right. So when we're talking about tort law, generally is that party is one party is asking for money to compensate for damages all right if i am involved in a accident or i'm injured by a product a defective product manufactured by a business the money i'm asking for is to compensate for the injury that i have and so we'll call those compensatory damages. All right. Um, now, there are several types of compensatory damages, but they all are awarded to reimburse the plaintiff, the injured party, for their actual legal injury or monetary loss. All right. So compensatory damages can be special. Special is easy because you can produce a receipt for it or an estimate for it. If someone, you know, rear ends your car, you can go to a body shop and get an estimate. All right. Or once the work's done, you'll have a receipt. Those are special compensatory damages. All right. General compensatory damages are awarded when there is a loss or a legal detriment, but it's not something that money can fix, or I should say not something that is easily quantifiable, all right? Uh, but like pain and suffering, all right? So I have been in a lot of pain. I've been unable to uh, move around after an accident. My quality of life has been decreased. So I'm going to ask for general compensatory damages in addition to special compensatory damages. All right. Um, and there is some terminology. We'll, we'll expound upon the terminology in class because uh, we'll talk about um, economic damages and caps thereupon. Uh, but for now, we'll stick with this terminology. Okay, so compensatory damages are about the plaintiff and their actual loss. Punitive damages are about the defendant. And the root word is punish. All right, so when uh, the plaintiff asks for punitive damages, we're asking the court to that is reprehensible. And the classic case here is, uh, well, we can talk about um, Liebeck versus McDonald's. We'll also spend some time in class talking about um, Grimshaw versus Ford Motor Company, right? But just the key is to understand that punitive damages are to punish the defendant. Compensatory damages are to fix or make whole 
the plaintiff in a tort case. All right. Um, so in this chapter, torts will be divided into two broad categories, the intentional torts and in your negligence torts. And negligence is the single most common cause of action in civil court. That means there's not an intent that whether it was an accident. All right. Uh, there can be defenses that the defendant would raise, even if the ele elements of these torts are met, or I should say an intentional tort or a negligence tort are met, there may be defenses against those, right? And we'll talk about that in the slides to come. All right, so in, in one of the documentaries we'll use in class, uh, we'll talk about tort reform. Um, it is very nature, tort reform really is just changed to existing court law. But what we're really talking about is making it more difficult to sue. Usually it's for uh, people, citizens, consumers to sue business all right um, and the because tort reform happens in the legislatures who uh, are generally lobbied by businesses with big lobbying budgets so what are we saying limiting the amount of damages that can be awarded many states have already done this uh, in fact um, we don't have to look uh, Alex Jones, the uh, InfoWars uh, TV show guy who was sued. Uh, the jury awarded the plaintiff in that case 40 some million dollars. Well, in the state of Texas, is capped at four. That's an example of tort reform. Capping the amount that attorneys, lawyers can accept as contingency fees. Um, generally, attorneys collect uh, up to a third of the award. So um, if you eviscerate or, or make that more difficult for attorneys, there's going to there's be less motivation for them to represent and get the big uh, jury awards. And then what I would call the English model or the European model, I should say, uh, when is if you sue somebody and you lose, you pay your legal fees and their legal fees. Uh, this hasn't caught as much traction, uh, and I don't think it's state law anywhere in the United States. But uh, judges have awarded it on a per um, per instance basis in a few cases, but that hasn't had as much traction as the first, uh, the, as the two previous bullet points. Okay. Uh, 